Hey, let's welcome in our first guest, Michael Walton. He knows a little bit about handling millions of dollars every now and then. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Michael is the uh, director of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation and has been a uh, frequent guest on the program. Great to have you here with us, too, as you are now in the process of, and or maybe already have, actually handed some money out. We have been awarding a lot of grants the last couple of months. Um, we'll be topping $1.3 million in grants and scholarships awarded this year alone. $1.3 mm. Yeah, it's really amazing. And speaking of lottery winners, Randy Smith, of course, who's a well-publicized lottery winner from Berkeley County and... Uh, he is part of the foundation, he too. He is, and we're hoping that he wins both the Mega Million <laughs> and the Powerball jackpot this time. Randy's incredibly yeah. generous. Um, he uh, donated $5.9 million to the Community Foundation in 2010 when he hit the Powerball jackpot. How big was his lottery win? Um, it was a $79 million oh. jackpot. I think he ended up with $44 million after taxes is what it was. Mm -hmm. But um, Wow. He he came right to the foundation and created the uh, W. Randy Smith Family Fund. Um, we've awarded right at $5 million in grants from that fund, and there's about $3 million, $3.3 .3 million left in it today because of investment. So it's worked out real well. I wonder across the country how many jackpot winners have done something like that. It, it seems to me to be an unusual thing because you hear mostly the stories about people blowing the money, but this is... Uh pretty selfless yeah it is really amazing i've only heard of one other one in um southeast michigan uh the community foundation there has a jackpot winner who uh, contributed funds to their foundation everybody says oh if i if i win i'm going to help so many people and then they go to a strip club and blow it all or get robbed or whatever or both or both as, as happened in a well publicized <laughs> case in west virginia a different part uh, of the state uh, Michael, what's the total balance right now of the foundation's funds? We have about $38 million in assets today. Um, we were right at $40 million um, in at the end of 2021, and then 2022 happened, and we lost um, money in the investment markets, like everybody else who was in the investment markets. Um, we built it back up now to roughly $38 million. And so our goal um, in our strategic plan is to be at $45 million at the end of 2024, and we're working towards that. What was the balance when you took over? Uh, it was about, I think, about $12 million. And what year was that? Uh, 2012. 2012. So, yeah, 2012, just about, uh, about 12 years ago. Well, that's a, a job well done. Well, thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, in regards to Randy Smith, he's got the, the balance with the foundation, but then they also built the Randy Smith Center from his funds in the south end of the county was part of that through the foundation it was yep we uh we awarded grants to parks and recreation for the uh, first and second um phases of that uh rec center down there and it's uh it's really proved to be a great success that was a great story i remember interviewing uh, randy about that and he was saying how his grandson who at that time was playing youth sports and said, I don't understand why we always have to drive up to Martinsburg to play a game. Why can't we play one down here? Yeah, it didn't get finished while he was still in high school. I think it was probably right around the time he graduated from high school, the grandson, but um, it is used uh, day and night down there. So it's a great facility. Matt Miller. Yeah, I know it, it is used a lot and, and uh, pickleball and, and some other, you know, kind of newer on the scene sports are available in that facility. Exactly. So, uh, Michael, talk to us a little about what the Community Foundation is. For those that may not be familiar, how does it work as a whole? So we work with donors who want to establish endowed funds to create lasting legacies for favorite charities or charitable causes. So somebody will come to us and say, um, I want to uh, do something for Horses with Hearts, mm -hmm. and I'd like to set it up so that they get uh, a, an annual distribution from my fund. So the donor may give us uh, $100,000, and we invest that money, and we distribute generally between 45 and 5% annually from the, um, the funds that we have. So uh, if we have uh, a $100,000 fund, we'll be able to... Uh, grant $5,000, $4,500, $5,000 to a nonprofit organization. A lot of times people will come to us because they've been supporters of a, a favorite charity, and they want to be able to continue doing that after they're gone. Mm -hmm. So this is a good way to leave a legacy. 
You mentioned earlier then $38 million mm -hmm. currently. That is taking the funds from all of those different programs, those folks that come in and want to support whatever the particular uh, agency or, or ministry or whatever it may be, and then you invest all of that and then work out of those funds as a whole? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have seven investment advisors that we work with. They all have a local presence here in the community, um, trust officers that mm -hmm. uh, work with the different banks. And they follow an investment policy statement that our investment committee crafts, and um, they make those investments. And then uh, the, the funds are pooled for investment purposes, but each fund is tracked individually. So we have about 280 endowed funds with the Community Foundation. 280 yeah how many of those have come in recent years uh, um they they've actually you know it's been a pretty steady flow we get between i would say 12 and 20 new funds a year um it's usually 12 14 funds a year something like that do you need a minimum to open a fund you do okay. um you can seed a fund with as little as $500. If you want to create an unrestricted fund, you can do that with $500, or what we call a field of interest fund can be seeded with $500. Uh, endowed uh, field of interest or unrestricted is 5000 And then if you wanted to do a donor-advised fund or an agency or designated fund, that would be $1,000 to seed and $10,000 to endow. And if you want to create a scholarship fund, it's 2000 to seed and 20000 to endow. And we have the minimum of 20000 for scholarships because we like to award at least $500. Um, and most of our scholarships are in that 500 to $1,500 range. I think Michael has done that talk before. <laughs> <laughs> seed versus endow. Okay. What is, define that for me. So the seed fund just means that you um, want to create an endowed fund, but you don't have the full amount to get to that level right away. So you have five years to build it from a seed fund to a fully endowed fund. Um, once it's fully endowed, then the distributions can be made from that fund. So when there is a blip in the market in investments, if there is if there's a scholarship or some kind of fund that isn't down for $100,000 a year, and the markets go down 5%. Does that $100,000 annual um, payment dip by 5% for the year that, it, that it's going down? So we're getting technical here. We work with a 20-quarter rolling average. So what we do is we look at um, how much money was in the fund over the last five years. And that's what we go off of as far as the distribution. So that levels out the peaks and valleys of the investments. Um, we also, if somebody's setting up a new fund, we will encourage them to endow the majority, the major portion of it. Um, it let's say it's a $100,000 uh, endowment uh, or a $100,000 fund. They would endow 85000 have 15000 is what we call spendables, so that would be used for those grants the first few years while the 20-quarter averages catch up. And an endowment is – describe what an endowment is. I was, I was going to guess, but I didn't want to be stupid. So um, this means that that is there in perpetuity. Um, it is not to be spent down. We have some funds, um, Randy Smith's fund is called a donor advised gift fund, and it can be spent down. And we, when we first got it, um, it was 5.9 million. Uh, the big project in South Berkeley, the rec center, uh, was a $1.5 million project. So that was certainly much more than the 5% distribution. But most of our funds, um, we encourage the donors to uh, set it up so that it is endowed, so that it'll be there serving the community in perpetuity. In the last few weeks, there have been some pretty significant news stories that involve embezzlement that uh, has has happened at a fairly large scale. Obviously, I'm not suggesting such a thing has happened with you, but I'm going to guess there have to be security measures in place to to watch the people who are watching the people. There are. We have a, a back office accountant that works with community foundations and helps us with our monthly and quarterly statements just to make sure that we are doing everything right. We've got a treasurer who reviews everything monthly. And then we have uh, Jan Heiden Barber who does our annual audit and our, um, our Form 990 for the IRS. So we are really careful about it. Um, we just, we realized we, we ordered checks the other day. We went through over a thousand checks in the last 
16 months. So it's an amazing amount of grant making that we're doing. Um, and we've got to pay, pay attention to what goes on at the house. So, so you still physically write checks to we pay do. out the funds as opposed we, to electronic uh, transfer? Yeah, we find that that's more secure. Um, that the electronic transfers, the community foundations, a, a lot of um, grant making organizations are not using electronic transfer because it can be fiddled with. Um, and the checks seem to be a more secure thing. And we're actually going to be delivering checks to, um, I think it's 42 different schools that have received grants, either as youth, uh, as education grants or mini grants to teachers in this this year. Um, we just, I actually just signed, I think, about 50 or 60 checks yesterday um, that will be delivered to the schools. Now, Michael, it's, it's tradition for our guests when they come on the program to bring, like if you're a baker, you bring in muffins mm. right right if, if mm -hmm. you are selling some kind of usually bringing a sample of that did you bring any checks for us today well i brought fund agreement letters that you can um all sign and well, make donations i was thinking the checks might be a better idea <laughs> oh okay no I, I didn't bring any checks um you know and we don't make grants to individuals that's one of the well, we're things. a collective this is a show <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that we've solved that problem no i can't do that sorry I've, I've got to imagine, though, that there's there's something special with a check, though, too. When when you're, hey, this is in your account. Oh, okay. It, it You don't see it. You don't touch it. You don't feel it. You're, it's just, okay, mentally I know it's there. When you're giving out a scholarship, when you're giving out a grant, I think there is something to the handing over uh, of an actual piece of paper that, that they can touch, feel, see, and and know, you know, this gift that's been given. Yeah, I agree. Um, one of the things that we do, we have a, just a, a, a small, large check that's about um, 20 inches by mm -hmm. 7 inches or something like that. just looks like a check, and we write that to the school, and um, we'll mention what the fund is for, what the grant is for. Who are some of your recent grant recipients, Michael? Oh, boy. Um, you know, I'll, I'll mention one. Um, Adam, um, gosh, his last name is eluding me right now, is a kindergarten teacher at Warm Springs Elementary in Morgan County. Adam Keeling is his name. And he's been teaching kindergarten for about 15 years and probably has gotten maybe uh, four or five grants from us over the years. And I met Adam at Shepherd University when I was finishing up my um, MBA. I took an elective course with um, in the Master's in Education and Curriculum, and it was on creativity in the classroom. And I met a number of teachers in that course, and Adam was one of them. And it's been fun to watch him and his career. He's a great kindergarten teacher. So he is getting manipulatives for his kids, different things for them to um, work with in, in kindergarten. And just a, a, a great teacher. We probably, I think we did over a hundred um, mini grants to teachers this year, and uh, also about, I think, 30 education grants. The education grants are up to $2,000. The mini grants are just up to 500. What's the largest grant you've ever handed out? Well, that would probably be the $1.5 million to Parks and Recreation for the rec center. What came in second place? Um, that's the, probably the $1 million to Parks and Recreation for the <laughs> second phase <laughs> of the, the rec center. center. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the costs went up on that as it went along. Yeah, yeah, I think they're still paying off a little bit on that. So for teachers who want to have mini grants, I presume this is, you say manipulative, whatever that word was, I, I presume that's stuff for the kids to, to it is. tactile you know, yeah. to play with. Uh, how high is the bar to qualify for that sort of thing? And 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 are the are the requests coming? It's up to five hundred dollars, but are you actually doing grants that are like two hundred sixty three dollars and seventy four cents? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I wrote checks yesterday or signed checks yesterday that were exactly that one hundred ninety two dollars and eighty eight cents or something. So the teachers, we encourage them to be precise. Tell us what you want to buy, how much it's going to cost, um, what you're going to use it for, how many kids are going to be impacted. Is it something that can be used in the classroom in the next year uh, or for several years, or is it just something that gets used up? Um, and then our grants committee meets twice to review applications the first time. Twice per? Twice per cycle. Okay. Um, so for the, mini, for the mini grants and education grants, they met um, on a Thursday they went over everything. If they had questions, we would follow up with the teachers to, to get more information. And then the following week, they would meet again and make the recommendations to our board. 
are more approved than disapproved? Yes. Yeah. The, um, I think that Berkeley County has a, a great group of uh, teachers and principals who really encourage the teachers to apply. So um, Berkeley County probably has about half and half, half approved and half not approved. But the good thing is Berkeley County Schools also does a mini grants program themselves. And so what we do when we finish with ours, we provide them with a list of who got funded and who didn't get funded. So they can look at that and make sure that they're not duplicating the funding, but also that they are reviewing applications that they may not have seen otherwise. Faith Hall wanted to thank you for helping with Rooney Park. What was the uh, grant for that? Oh, well, that was a really cool thing. That's a, That was another uh, W. Randy Smith family fund. Um, Rooney Park has two baseball fields over at um, just behind the Tomahawk Ruritan Club. And uh, it's a really nice park that's been there for years, but the baseball fields have kind of been neglected over the years. Matt, you look like you have yeah, been there. Been there. Yeah. Um, beautiful. I mean, it's got one of the nicest settings of mm -hmm. any um, baseball setup. It's it's beautiful. The fields look out over North Mountain, really pretty. Um, and so there were a couple of volunteers who had been working on getting the park, um, the the baseball field set up in a much better way and um and they approached randy smith and he said let's do it so i think we did a twenty thousand dollar grant mm -hmm. and they got about a hundred thousand dollars worth of work done because they had people volunteering with heavy equipment and working with parks and recreation it was a great yeah great if project. you can get people to volunteer with heavy equipment you can come in under mm -hmm. budget with a yeah. lot of those kind of projects helps to know some people yeah and you know randy at first randy was doing everything uh he was recommending all of these grants and paying for everything and we've convinced him that partnerships are better that if he can get other people with skin in the game uh they'll appreciate the uh the project more and mm -hmm. uh and be more uh committed to getting it done so that's really what we're doing now we've worked on a lot of projects um uh, Charlotte uh, Prather Park, I believe it is, um, here next to P.O. Faulkner. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on a project with the city and the Board of Education to pave that parking lot for the girls softball field, which is something that's needed. Our friend uh, Karen Hammond Dunn said, don't forget to mention the scholarship dates, Michael. I should put two exclamation points. Actually, there's, oh, one's an L for your Michael, the other two exclamation points. <laughs> and, and did she... Um, happened to include the she did scholarship of course dates. she did when she's Karen <laughs> I was gonna say well that's good but why don't why don't you uh, share them with us sure Michael, I know you, I know Michael you know will tell these. you if you're right Mike, Michael knows these he just doesn't want to seem you know like you know he's a know-it-all December 1 to February 28 that's correct yes of course <laughs> that's without saying it, it actually the scholarship dates have been uh, kind of fluid this year because the FASFA um, which is a, a government form that everybody has to fill out in order to get any kind of financial assistance. For I still get a feeling in my stomach when you mention the funds. <laughs> yeah, so that has been a nightmare. They have uh, been revising it, and they have not uh, put it live yet. So we've pushed back our date to uh, to December 1st. As our Here's my interpretation of the FAFSA form. Give us every piece of financial information you've ever had in your life. If you're wrong about one of those things, you can go to jail. And by the way, you're not getting anything anyway. <laughs> but thanks for turning it in. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I, actually, we've looked real uh, long and hard at other options because it does seem like it's making people jump through crazy hoops. Mm. Um, and unless you're getting a Pell Grant or some... And uh, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, well, and that leads to another thing. If you want to talk about scholarships, um, it's very difficult for somebody who's making a decent amount of money to get any kind of financial support from a Pell Grant or anything like that. It's um, it, it, and it's tough for us because we have so many scholarships that are based on financial need. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, somebody who's making seventy thousand dollars a year and has two kids going off to college does have financial need. Mm -hmm. You know, those kids are going to end up with uh, debt if they don't have scholarships or grants. Yes. Um, is there a value judgment made in, terms, in the case of a scholarship to go to a, a college, whether it's going to be a um, sociology degree, an engineering degree, an art degree, does it, does it matter? Is, is there a judgment of, of which degree is going to um, have 
have greater likelihood for future employment, or does that not? I don't think it? I like your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a history major. Right? I write books for a living, so it's not. Um, a lot of our scholarships are actually targeting certain professions. So um, George Karras created a scholarship for a pharmacy school. Um, we've got uh, scholarships for kids who are going to study to be veterinarians, uh, to be teachers, um, to be nurses. And so a lot of times that is the focus and how we narrow it down. So you can start one for students who want to be writers. Exactly. Yes, but why would I increase the competition? <laughs> <laughs> this is a hard business as it is. I think Gilstrap would like scholarships to be devoted to book buyers. Yeah. So there's extra yes. money. That's, that's right. Or booksellers. Book How to run a good much. bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable thing. So, Michael, let, let me go back to planning some seed money okay. and then trying to work our way up to the endowment. Um, can I then just approach friends, family, even through my Facebook, whatever, make it public and say, hey, put money into this particular, uh, um, I, I don't even know what you it's call a it. A fund. A fund. Okay. Fund. And and then grow it that way? So, yeah, anybody can make a donation to any of the funds that we have at the Community Foundation. They are all open-ended. So, in other words, um, it's not a, a closed uh, fund. It, it's something that can grow in time. Um, and we encourage people to – I mean, I have people who make gifts uh, in honor of friends on their birthday that, you know, it's made to the – um, McMillan family fund every year on Bob's birthday and um, and that's a really nice way to recognize somebody who doesn't need anything um, but has a, a an endowment at the community foundation so yes you can encourage people to contribute to your fund um, if you're doing a fundraiser for a specific fund we ask you to um, let us know that you're going to be doing it and, and make sure that you're doing it right because we want to make sure that we're a 501 c3 nonprofit organization we have to do everything uh, by the book so we can go to your website and find a list of all of the endowments you and can. and be able to know hey i might want to contribute to a particular one absolutely okay. and and you can donate on the website and there's a drop down menu so all of the funds are on that drop down menu you could make a gift to the w randy smith family fund if you win the lottery you don't even have to create your own new fund you can just <laughs> donate it to us if i'm putting 10 million dollars into a fund it's going to have my name on it. <laughs> exactly right <laughs> fair enough uh michael how much longer do you think you might do this job um six months and then that's it yeah yeah i i've um we're going to be working on a succession plan on thursday so um That'll be my 12th anniversary, and I think mm -hmm. that that's a good, long time. i um, very happy with all that we've done. Lots more uh, things that I want to do with my <laughs> life, and I'm glad to be able to have uh, worked so hard for so long for such a great organization. I had heard some rumors. Figured I'd inquire. <laughs> well, C congratulations on you. a great run. Six months yeah. to go. Yep. And uh, I know you'll be back on at least once, maybe twice before that run is over. Would love to be. Absolutely. Yep. That'd be great. And then uh, we'll work you in Gilstrap seat as a co-host. Okay. You know, because. <laughs> hey. He'll be doing book signing. <laughs> you know, I'm here, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. Uh, uh, Michael, how can people find out more about the foundation and uh, what's your website, sir? The website is www.ewv cf.org it's the initials for the eastern west virginia community foundation thanks so much for coming in my pleasure